So this is the oil pumper, uh, automatic oiler from my machine. It is made by uh, Bejur. I don't know how you say that. Uh, and you can see the model number is D2990A. So I looked that up on the internet. I didn't find a whole lot of information. I found a PDF that had general information about it, which didn't tell me much more than my Bridgeport manual did. Um, but here's what I know about it. Uh, this is the fill cap. Uh, this is a manual pump. So if you pull up on that, it'll do a, a single pump of oil. Uh, this here is the uh, outlet when you, when, where the oil gets pumped for, out at. Uh, and then this little motor here uh, is on a, a cam of some sort with some gearing. <clears throat> and it spins and once every 30 minutes it pumps oil. Pumps a, a squirt of oil. Now, I don't know that this pump actually works um, part of the reason I pulled it out is because, I don't know if you can see, but my machine is kind of against the wall here and it's too heavy to, to turn. It's, as I may have mentioned before, it's like 3,500 pounds. So it's very difficult to turn and it's very difficult to work back there in that corner. So I pulled it out and I'm going to see if I can verify that it actually works. Uh, that's kind of important. These two red wires are connected to a float, and if the oil level gets too low, uh, it flips the switch, and that switch originally was connected to uh, the kill, well, not the kill switch, to uh, the electronics, and it wouldn't shut off the spindle if the oil level got too low, but if when you were, the spindle stopped, it would not start back up again until the oil level was uh, high enough. The blue and the uh, white wire here are the uh, 115 volt power. All right, and then one other thing is <clears throat> uh, the oil that's recommended for it, as you can see down here, is Sunoco number 1180. Um, in the manual, it also says Mobile Vacra number two, I think it is, um, and a couple of others, uh, which is uh, ISO 68 viscosity. So I looked around, I, the, a little pricey for the whey oil, so I looked around for other oils and I found this at uh, Tractor Supply Company, which is also ISO 68, it's hydraulic oil, which is what it's called for, uh, and is, uh, <clears throat> is non-detergent oil, so um, I'm pretty sure it'll, it'll work just fine. So I went ahead and got that because it's a about between, I don't know, a quarter and half the price of the mobile, mobile Vacra uh, oil that I was looking at. So uh, that's what I've got in here now. So I'm going to hook this up and see if I can make the motor run and see if it'll pump oil. Okay, as you can see, I've taken the oil pump apart. When I, when I was working on it, I decided, you know, I better check the filter uh, because this has a filter on it, of course. That's the filter right there. Uh, it normally fits uh, right down at the bottom here. So I took that apart and, uh, and the bottom of this canister here was about an H inch thick and just black sludge. And there was black sludge all over this, these surfaces here. Um, so I cleaned it all off. Uh, sorry, I didn't get any video of that, but it's all cleaned up now. I've ordered a new filter for this. I'm not really sure how to take this filter out. Um, so I'm going to just play with it and see if I can get it out and you can come along for the ride. There's a ring in here that I suspect is compressed. If you compress a little farther, I bet you could get past these little notches and get it out. So let's see, how would you do that? Can I push it down? Maybe I push it, maybe I can push this in. Oh yeah, I can push that down a little bit. That might be part of the key. Um, it 
might simply be get something behind it and pry it forward. Let's try that. Don't want to ruin it. Need something sharper. I have in one of these drawers this a scriber. I suspect my scriber might be sharp enough to get in there and pull it out. And in case I didn't tell you already, I've ordered a new set of filters and it comes with uh, uh, the means to replace it. There you go. I think I'm I think that's exactly what I need to do. There we go. Got that out. Next. This oh yeah. Look at that. This. Aha. Uh -huh. There we go. All right. That is a very, very small filter, or I should say the holes in that filter are very small. I wonder if I actually need a new one. This looks like it's in really good shape, looks really clean. I'll bet that if I just knew how to clean that out, I don't really know though. Doesn't matter, I ordered a new one already. It should be here in the next couple days. it because I'm not sure that that piece gets replaced oh, that looks nice That's in good shape it looks like to me it's, it's got a one-way ball valve in there you can hear that right there so of course it sucks the fluids up in here and then when the so here's the plunger can you see that yeah you can all right so here when this pulls up, it sucks fluids up into a reservoir up here. And then when it pushes back down, the ball plugs the hole and it forces the oil out through this little tube here. In case I didn't show you this already, this came apart fairly easily. Just had four screws. That was it. Pull those four screws out and I was able to just pull the whole thing out of here. This gasket's in pretty good shape. I bent it right here a little bit when I was taking it out, which was a little damaged, but it's not a pressure gasket, so it should be fine. That was pretty straightforward. Let's fill this thing up and make sure that it'll pump oil out. I think this takes about a quart of oil. But luckily I can see on the side. Something kind of funny about this was I thought, when I was looking online, I saw this oil urn and I could see all the reservoirs were clear plastic. And uh, I looked at mine, I'm like, oh, mine's different. Mine has black plastic reservoir. Come to find out it was just the really black oil in there made it look black. It is clear. All right, there's oil in there. Excellent. Let's uh, see see if this what will happen here is this is spring loaded. I'm gonna pull up on it. It's not easy to pull up on. When you let go, that's when it pumps oil. But I just, it's probably gonna take a couple pumps before anything comes out because it's got a. Uh, you know, fill up the reservoir first. At least, maybe only two pumps now I think about it, but let's try it. So pull that up. Yeah. All right, nothing came out. We're gonna see it just squirt, splooge out of there. Okay, that one made noise. Oh, there it goes, all right. All right, one more time, because that looked like it had air in it. Oh yeah, there we go. That's what we're looking for. So I'm gonna clean this up 
and then I'm going to put it back in the machine. I don't know that I'll be able to get any video of putting it back in the machine, but because it's back in the corner where I'm not sure I can even get the camera and work on it at the same time. So I probably may not show that. I might just show you what it's like when it's, when it's reinstalled. So here is the oiler back in his cabinet. I did not connect it back up to the panel yet to hang it because I wanted to test it. I'm not sure that's working, but I'm also not sure it's not. So I'm, at, uh, I'm struggling a little bit here. I pull up on the plunger and the plunger stays up. Now there's a pressure gauge right there, which you probably can't see. Whoops. Now, anyways, the glare is going to be a problem, but the pressure gauge goes up to about 42 PSI when the plunger's at the top. And then it slowly, slowly, slowly drops down as the plunger goes down very slowly. Now, that could mean that the system is clogged. Because uh, if I push down on the plunger, the pressure gauge up will go up to 100 PSI, but uh, I don't have very easy access to where the oil comes out. So I'm a little bit concerned that maybe the oil's not getting to the places where it needs to. And if it's not, that could be really bad for the machine. So I think I really only have one choice, which is to try to track all of that and make sure that there's oil coming out where it needs to. That's a lot of work because I got to pull apart lots of pieces of the machine to get to all of those spots. So this could be quite an adventure. Okay, I'm feeling better about the oiler now. That one little, that little tube back there in the back is the one oiler that I have easy access to see. And I wasn't seeing any action there. But now, looking after pulling the plunger up a few times, I can see that there's oil starting to pool underneath it. That oiler oils the uh, Z-axis up and down uh, travel. But also, the other thing I can see is this lead screw up here that turns and makes the Z-axis go up and down. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, but there is definitely oil in that lead screw now where there was not before. So now I'm feeling much more confident about the oiler and getting oil to the different places in the machine. Apparently it's working the way it should and I've probably got way too much oil on the machine now because I pulled it up the plunger multiple times. <laughs> but you really can't have too much oil. It's not going to cause any problems other than just a mess.